because at some point, not at some point, we didn't even hear you at all. Just so, like I said, right? For someone who didn't read the article, please just explain it to us. You know what? What was David trying to? What was he trying to say? You know what do you think about the article? You know. So I'm going to quickly um, yeah. go through the article. Um, like I said before, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very clearly, very, very clear. Oh, beautiful. So like I said before, there is a NASCO. Yeah. Is, there is a NASCO group of company yeah. owned by Idris Nasreddin. Yeah. Idris Nasreddin died in Rome. Yeah. And uh, he died at the age of 96. Yeah. And nice NASCO group of company had providing food, uh, breakfast, yeah, and other special, um, edible food. Complex biscuits, yeah. Yes, at the point he went into real estate, and yeah. you know, all that, to kids. So, and then the proceeds from this company is used to finance terror, not mm-hmm. just in Nigeria, mm-hmm. but equally in some other parts of the world. Yeah. Now, Nathodin was, or uh, yeah, was one time listed as one of the terror finances. Yeah, by the US, uh, tra- tra- by the US Treasury Department, yes. Word at the time, which because of his influence, he mm. uh, David tried to David tried to explain this to us that once you have once you cut a deal with America, yeah. Uh, the, and then your, your activities don't affect them directly. Yeah. They could actually, you know, cut off a deal for you. Yeah. So what NASCO is doing doesn't concern America. Yeah. NASCO is ready to cut a deal with them, which he did, and then his name was removed from, you know, the world um, uh, uh, list of terrorism finance uh, financiers. Yeah. So. That is it for NASCO. Now, someone is going to ask, how is NASCO? Okay, so how, do, how does it do it? He, he, does it bring money and give, you know? So that is it for, for NASCO. And then how it actually got to affect Nigeria. Mm. Like how it started in Nigeria. So um, it started from someone, uh, someone they call Gumi. Yeah. He is... The Sheikh, uh, Islamist color. Um, color, yeah. Who is in Nigeria, and and for some reason he, he is very prominent, you know, and, and and wields a lot of power because you, 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 imagine imagine us when when at a point um, when someone is uh, imagine children to be, mm. right? You would be very intelligent. And to some extent, people will listen to him yeah. because of the, the knowledge that he wields, right? Yeah. So this guy is one of, you know, very smart guys in, in, in Islam teaching and all that. So uh, people listen to him a lot. Mm. That is Gumi. At the point, um, he returned to uh, Kaduna and Kado and started teaching Islamic um, uh, studies so, and people actually listen to him and respect him a lot. So, and after some time, he started inculcating the real deal of the Islamic that's trying to Islamize, right? Nigerians, yeah. So, um, at the point he formed, he formed a group, Islam movements, and yes, mm. and tried to let them understand that they should refuse. I think there's a point that there was a place he made mention that they should refuse any person that is not uh, an, uh, an Islam to become, that practice Islam to become the president of Nigeria. So yeah, yeah. The, the, the Northern should, should reject such things, mm. right? So this is how I'm trying to I'm trying to make connections of how Nigeria is keyed into what um, Nasreddin is doing, yeah. and of course trying to link it with Al Qaeda and other terror organizations around the world. I still have the rest, yeah. I good. Thank you very much for that. This guy is not just he's not just the only person. Sorry, he's not just um, uh, financing just uh, 
you know, uh, Nigeria Boko Haram. Mm. There's more. Yeah. So, so he tried to link other people who who had something to do with. Um, so at the point, there is a sect called the Jubilees. Yeah. He, he called it something in, in, in Hausa, but I'm going to translate it in, your, in, in English. He said, Society for Removal of Innovative and Re-Establishment of yeah. the Sunnah. Right? Yeah. So, which is the Jibwis. Now, this Jibwis um, is a Josh, and it is part of, like I said before, the Zala movement. This organization will become, this organization, like he said, he said this organization will become very influential. Uh, the, the most influential Islamic body in Nigeria over a few decades. Yeah. So, this is where he started bringing. Nigeria very close to uh, the Nigeria story around terrorism, mm. very close to you know what uh, Nasruddin is doing with all that you know terror organizations around the globe. Yeah. So um, the Islam movement, uh, I'm trying to think of people who are in Nigeria, Nigeria government who are influential in Nigerian government, present day Nigerian government. And who have something to do with the terrorism? Yeah. So for so for so for example, there will be someone like Isa Pantami, Minister of Communications. Um, there is the Isa Pantami there. There is someone that there is Gumi. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The popular. Yeah. The one. The famous. Uh, yeah. Uh, the famous supporter. Islamic teacher. Yeah. Supporter of Man. Fulani headsman and yeah. Good. Good. There is Gumi. So we've talked about we've talked about Isam Antami, we've talked about um, uh, Abu Bakr Mahmoud mm -hmm. Gumi. So Abu Bakr Mahmoud Gumi is the father of Shaikh Abu Bakr Gumi, right? Yeah. And I think um, we we know that already. So when the when this when these guys started the rise in Nigeria, when these guys started the rise in Nigeria, I think the first attack. The first attack was the one that happened. Twenty eleven. The first attack was happened. Uh, Twenty eleven. Saint, Saint Teresa's Catholic Church in Abuja. Uh, house good. The house kept of Abuja. Yeah. We are thirty five persons were killed on the spot, and fifty two persons were wounded. Yeah. So that was the first attack that happened, and that was in that was in two thousand and eleven. Yeah. On the twenty fifth of Christmas. Um, yeah. Uh, to, sorry, twenty fifth of December. Uh, which is the Christmas day, um, 2011. Yeah. So um, we we've, we've established we've established um, Gumi and the party is playing. Now we equally would have to mention. Okay, we we will we'll not get to Yusuf and Shakao now. According to what he said, he said Yusuf and Shakao are not even they're not come very close to what it is, and they cannot stand where the main people who are terrorizing Nigeria can stand. They are like they are like the people they bring out to show us that these are the people who are doing this, but they are not really the people who are, you know, doing the playing the playing the game in Nigeria. Now we have called we have called the Sapata, we have called them um, Gumi, and there is another person we are about to call right now who is um Abubakar Musa Kastina, who is equally Yakubu Musa Kamfanchan. Yeah. This is the chairman of the board of trustees for the Kastina State Jibwis. Remember these Jibwis, they what what they like I said, they, they, they are part of the Salam movement. What they do is mm. to make sure that to make sure that they if there are anything that is coming into the north that doesn't sound to be Islamic in nature, yeah, they are going to that the, to, to fight it, to the against it, the one that the one that opposes it. Remember, that's the meaning of Boko Haram. Yeah, you understand the that Boko Haram means we don't want anything that has to do with non-Islamic anything. Yeah. 
So, but this this Jibwe's is the boss. Like that was how the movement started. So mm. anything that is not Islamic in nature, these guys fight against it and remove it. So, um, and in many places, Isa Pantami is seen meeting with this man. Yeah, there were pictures. Right. There, there were pictures of him. Him even this man with Buhari. This you know. Good. I was I was I, I was actually getting to that. This yeah. this this Kafan Chan man. There are pictures where he met with Buhari. Yeah. And remember that Kafan Chan, this man, have been. I'm trying to get where he was, where he was arrested and detained. And yeah. after a very long time, was released. Mm -hmm. it, not just that he's a free man, not just that he's a free man, but he is equally powerful. A free man that is with the ministers and the president of yeah. Nigeria himself. Which yeah. means if the president would stand with him and other Nigerian ministers would stand with him, knowing that he is someone supporting terrorism, mm. not just in Nigeria. But listed in some other parts of the world, yeah, including the Jordan, but uh, the, the Jordan government, but yeah, who recognize that yes, this guy is one of one of the most 200, 200 most influential Islamic persons in the world. But he one time was a, you know arrested for you know um, terror, terrorism in Nigeria, and now he's free, yeah, and. Any right thinking Nigerian person, Nigeria who is a Nigerian government, will understand that this man should be avoided. But in the present day government, he is not avoided. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he is welcomed. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, you are there to you. Kapanchan, right now. We are going to get to another person apart mm -hmm. from Gumi. We're going to get to another person apart from Gumi. And of course, it's up and Tamu. Good. The other person is Yakub Musa Hassan. Yep. Yakub. These guys that we are mentioning, these guys that I'm mentioning right now, okay, Mr. Kafanchan was recently named as one of the 500 most influential Muslims in the world. In the world. Yeah. By the you know Royal Islamic Strategic Study Center, a Jordan government affiliated NGO. This is where he was, um, like I 